Awesome. So uh, what I didn't want to do today is talk a whole lot about Ample Organics. Uh, I really wanted to just kind of tell you my story, uh, how I got into the industry, and some of the things I've learned along the way. So um, yeah, this will kind of flow a little bit. I don't know if the slides will line up or not, but we'll, uh, we'll just go with it. So my adventure into cannabis started back in 2012. Um, I had the opportunity of you know, being a lonely guy up in Lindsay, Ontario, working at a crappy medical devices company. Um, it was a pretty boring place to work, but I knew a little bit about working with Health Canada and a little bit about compliance, uh, a little bit about how to fill out a design master record and lot controls and all this kind of fun stuff, GS1 barcoding standards, super exciting. Um, and that, that's, that was my life. Um, and then one day I met a girl. And uh, I was downhill from there. <laughs> so I met this girl. Um, she lived in the city. Uh, I really liked her, so I quit my job and I moved in with her. Um, but I remember on our second date, we were sitting in a park and she pulled out a joint uh, and lit it up. And of course, I, wasn't, I was an IT guy. I, I worked on enterprise technology. I worked in offices with guys in suits. And uh, yeah, needless to say, cannabis wasn't a big theme in my life. I could probably count on one hand the number of times I'd seen it, let alone smoked it. So. Uh, you know, my in initial reaction was, holy crap, you know, put that away or you're going to get us arrested. Um, and obviously it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, but it bothered me because, you know, it was one of those things where I was, you know, trying to be a professional in the space, wear a suit to work, all that kind of fun stuff. And, and you know, here's this girl that I like and I'm living with. Um, and uh, she's smoking pot at home all the time. And I was worried about going to work and, and stinking like weed. Um, fortunately for me, I didn't have a job. So it was, it was actually okay. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> She uh, got sick and tired of me kind of bumming around the house and, and told me to go work with, with her brother. And so I did that, uh, pro bono, um, just something to get me out of the house, I guess. And so I was doing that. Um, one day this guy, kind of crazy guy, comes in and says, you know, hey, the federal government is going to let us cultivate, produce, and sell cannabis uh, for medical purposes. And of course, we burst out laughing and told him he was a liar. Um, ultimately, that wasn't, that wasn't true. So he, he produced this paperwork, um, and it was this draft legislation for the Marijuana for Medical Purposes regulations, and this was in August of 2012. Um, so having a little bit of experience in filling out regulatory applications and things like that, I, I helped out, and I filled out their record-keeping component and, and told them a little bit about how to keep records and, and monitor all this good stuff happening in their facility. Um, and ultimately, they won the very first license in Canada, and that was with the Peace Naturals Project. So I've been around uh, practically uh, since day one, uh, which brings me to my first point. Uh, opportunity knocks. Uh, you just got to open the door and go with it. So after that happened, I uh, didn't stay on with the project. I actually went to work in broadcasting for a bit because TV is super cool. Uh, and then the cannabis industry took off and TV wasn't cool anymore. <laughs> so uh, I bailed out of there and I thought, well, hey, I'm going to get in the cannabis industry. You know, I have a little bit of experience with the Peace Naturals Project, putting together this record-keeping stuff, and, and you know, I, I know a little bit about the business. Got really passionate about it, did a whole bunch of production models and things like that. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to start a licensed producer. Unfortunately for me, there were 1,600 applications uh, in the queue uh, at that time in 2014. So that taught me my second lesson, which was swim upstream and go against the flow. So what I realized was that if there's 1,600 companies that are going to come in here and start producing cannabis, and every one of them is going to need a record-keeping solution to track all of their cannabis activities, well, that creates a great opportunity for me. Um, so instead of getting into the knife fight, I decided to start selling knives, and we started Ample Organics in uh, August of 2014. So biggest lesson I've learned along the way don't compete with your customers. Just make software. So we really, you know, we've had so many opportunities to create marketplaces and patient aggregation platforms and all of these great things that could potentially displace our customers or interfere with their ability to conduct business or potentially cannibalize uh, their revenues. Um, and I think a big part of our success has been because we haven't done those things. Um, and that brings me to my next point, which is that we are a partner, not a vendor. So it's a very simple equation. You always want to be on the top of it. Um, and then you do that by being transparent and open and listening to what your customers want and do everything that they say. Lastly, uh, the most important lesson I learned along the way is that uh, we don't service illegal businesses. So in every government regulator meeting I've ever had, whenever I've met with major uh, Fortune 500 corporations, uh, big tech companies, uh, all of these kinds of things, the first question I get is, are you operating in the United States? Or are you servicing dispensaries in Vancouver or Toronto? And the answer has always been no. Uh, and that's really, really helped us kind of stay legitimate and brought us a lot of the opportunity that we have in front of us today. 
And that's about it. That's my story. So now, you know, as it stands today, we have Ample Organics, which is a great record-keeping software company. Uh, we're hiring like crazy. Uh, check out our careers page. And, uh, you know, it's, it's been and, and it's sort of this, this incredible journey of creating uh, something so simple by focusing on what we were really good at that uh, we're just about to surpass one million orders of medical cannabis shipped to Canadians all across the country. There are questions, I hope. Are you servicing only Canada? And if so, do you have plans to expand out of Canada? And if you have plans to expand out of Canada, how do you fare against competitors? I assume this overlaps with what Trellis does and similar organizations. Yeah, what I can say is that uh, since we started the company in 2014, we haven't lost a single customer. Um, and I can also say that we have clients on five continents. Uh, so we are global. Where do you see opportunities to improve uh, quality assurance, quality control uh, versus uh, along the supply chains? That, uh, you have a unique opportunity to give us some insight into what is happening actually. Yeah, well, I think, you know, we've, we've got this great ecosystem of cannabis happening in Canada where, you know, we see things like GMP uh, rules surrounding how we produce cannabis if you want to export it to Europe or Australia or places like that. We're seeing a global cannabis economy emerge. Um, so. I think we're already there. In terms of the quality assurance and compliance aspects, we're good. Um, what's next is enabling the industry um, to be more flexible uh, and to be more agile. So um, one of the things we're working on right now is Ample Exchange. So Ample Exchange is a wholesale marketplace uh, that allows licensed producers to conduct business with one another and likewise allows provincial entities to do procurement uh, through the platform because today we have about 75% of the national supply chain of cannabis uh, in real time on our platform. Awesome, thank you.